Hey traders, I am back with another spin on my favorite way to trade the stock market. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that my favorite ticker to trade is SPX, my favorite time frame to trade is zero DTE, and my favorite strategy is selling credit spreads. The first half of the year, I focused mainly on selling vertical credit spreads, so either a bull put credit spread or a bear call credit spread. And then after the market recovered from the Corona crash, I started putting on iron condors. So basically one of each, right? Both a um, bull put spread and a bear call credit spread. And then sometimes I would do like a broken wing butterfly in the final hours of the day. Um, a couple of months ago, a member of our service mentioned this iron butterfly strategy. And since it could be done on SPX and on a zero DTE timeframe, I thought, great, this aligns perfectly with my trading strategy. Also, I wanna give credit to a trader named Jim Olson who crafted this particular setup. So not the iron butterfly, but this particular way of trading it. Um, I don't know him, but I linked his website down below. So I will share a live trade where I include how to set up the trade in both Thinkorswim and E-Trade, and you can watch it work. Um, I try to include both a winner and a loser in this video, but honestly, since I've been keeping track of these trades, I haven't had a loser, so I'll just have to make a video at a later time showing the loser. Um, but before I do, let me show you what the Iron Butterfly I'm gonna explain this right on the option chain. I think it's the easiest way to visualize this. So when I sell a regular vertical spread, I come to the option chain and I try and get as far away out of the money um, and still collect a decent credit. So for me, that's usually around 10 or 12 Delta. So if I'm bullish on the day, I'll come to the option chain, I'll go here and I'll sell this and hope that SPX continues to trade higher for the rest of the day and that, that this decays to zero and that I keep whatever I whatever premium I sold it for. If I am bearish on the day, I come to this side of the option chain and I sell maybe this credit spread, hope that SPX continues to trade lower for the rest of the day and I keep whatever credit I received here. When I trade in Iron Condor, I do both of those things at the same time. So I sell this call credit spread, I sell this put credit spread, and I hope that SPX trades in this area and expires in that area, and therefore I keep the credit that I received here and the credit that I received there. When I trade a butterfly, you come to the at the money strikes and you pick either the put side or the call side, and you go short here too, and then you put on equally distant long wings. Of course, it would cost a billion dollars just to go short the two in the middle, right? So what makes an iron butterfly an iron butterfly is you are going short both a call and a put of the same strike, right? So you go short a 3710 call and a 3710 put, and then you put on your equally distant wings. All right, so that's the breakdown of what the butterfly looks like on the option chain. So here are the pros that I love about this trade, and I think you will too if you're familiar with credit spreads. Number one, the time in the trade. This trade works so quickly. Um, in a regular credit spread, I can, on it, even on its best day, it, it, it might work in an hour. So for a regular credit spread for me to decay to 10 cents in the first hour of the day, that's a fantastic day. But the average time in trade for a regular credit spread is usually like four or five hours. This trade, if it's not working in the first hour, then you can just cut it loose, either for a minimal profit or a minimal loss. But most of the time, this trade works within an hour. Secondly, this trade is non-directional, so there isn't a whole lot of legwork to do pre-market. Um, so normally I'd be looking at the futures activity overnight and other indicators that would help me choose a bullish or bearish vertical spread, but this trade setup doesn't really require that. It's just a very mechanical setup. Thirdly, it's a pretty stress-free conservative trade. So long as you have a stop loss rule and you stick to it, there's no 
chance of having a huge loss. You can't really get a max, you can't reach a max loss on this trade unless you're just super reckless and don't manage it at all. And lastly, like I touched on earlier, this trade has a high probability of success. It wins a lot. So I started trading this a couple of months ago in early November, maybe October. I wasn't really keeping track of it like I do with my vertical credit spreads because I guess just in my brain, I need separate accounts for different strategies. So at the beginning of December, I opened an E-Trade account. I put 6,000 bucks in there just so I could trade this strategy. And since I did that, I haven't had a loser. So I'm not saying that this strategy is 100%. But um, I just, I haven't had a loser to show. Um, and whatever the probability of success it is, it's pretty high. So I'll follow up on uh, after a couple months of trading this, a couple more months of trading this and see um, how that account stands. All right, I'm gonna let my live trade play and then I'll talk about the cons. If you don't wanna watch the live trade, which ended up like, being more film time than I thought it would be. So I didn't want to make the video super long, but if you want to skip the live trade, um, scroll forward to this time. Good morning. It's about four minutes until the market opens. And normally I look at where ES is trading so that I can set up my chart or set up my trade um, based on where SPX will open. However, um, Today's Friday, December 18th. It is quad witching day. It is also the day that Tesla is being added to the S&P. So if ever there is a good day to sit out on the iron fly, it's probably today, but I'm still going to take one. I'm just going to wait 10 to 15 minutes to enter the fly. Um, and I will be back and I'll show uh, how it is that I enter the fly at that time. All right, so it is six minutes after the market has opened. This was the at the money strike, the 37.20 when the market opened. And this was the price of the Ironfly 2015. And now you can see that the price has actually increased. So it served me well to wait, um, to wait a few until getting into this Ironfly. So I'll be back in about five minutes. Right, in the meantime, I'm just gonna show how it is that I actually set up the Ironfly. Um, I come to the option chain and I look at what the at the money strikes are. Um, at the money is either this strike or this strike, right? So you have to use a little bit of discretion. And of course, sometimes it jumps around. So now it's the 25 and the 20 on the call side. So in order to set up the 50 wide iron fly, you just right click on your short strike, tap sell, oops, and iron condor. And then you make sure that the short strikes match. So here's your short, here's your short. You change that to 3720, and then you're gonna add 50 on the call side. and you're going to subtract 50 from 3720 on the put side. <clears throat> and that is your standard 50 wide iron fly. And sometimes you can go out wider if, you, if the premium and your buying power um, substantiate going out wider. So like I said, I'm gonna wait another couple minutes until I enter this. Okay, so we're about 13 to 14 minutes into the market open, and here's where the at the money strikes are. So I'm going to set up my order um, for the 3715 Ironfly. So here are my matching short strikes, and then I've added 50 on the call side, subtracted 50 on the put side. And here's where the mark is. And I'm actually gonna execute the trade in um, an E-Trade account that I set up just for, um, just for doing these trades. So I, at the beginning of December, I opened up a small account here so that I could um, put on these trades here 
and but I'll do another video where I execute it in thinkorswim but today I'm doing it here in this small account so if I click on 3715 and I hit trade E-Trade actually has an iron butterfly format so I have to make sure that the short strikes match so I'm selling the 3715s and make sure this is correct so oops I've got the wrong expiration date I know E-Trade has it listed as December 20th and TOS has it listed as December 18th, but December 20th is Sunday, so E-Trade, I guess, just chooses the settlement date for their option chain. So I'm going to send this for, I'm just kind of looking at the TOS option chain as well. All right, so I will check back in after this fills. All right, so I modified my order to 2370 because I wasn't getting a fill at 90. And so it executed here at what time? I don't know, it doesn't tell me the time on the screen. Anyways, it's 649, so I will check back in in 10 or 15 minutes and we'll look at the chart and see how this um, iron butterfly is varying. All right, so we've been in the trade now for about 20 minutes. This is the this is the candle here that we entered the trade and this is where SPX is trading now. And this is our short strike, right, 37.15. So this is what my profit and loss looks like for one iron butterfly on E-Trade. It's just now going positive, but it was as low as like 100, 150 bucks when it when we were down here at the low. So this kind of action, one way down action is not good for the trade. Um, but so long as we start to move up here closer to 37.15, it, it will recover. But I was just looking at yesterday, which was Thursday. Um, this kind of a day is a wonderful, perfect price action for an iron butterfly because you can see it kind of stayed in this range bound in this range and it closed you know somewhere we're near where we opened so um anyways days like this type of price action is good this type of price action is not good but that doesn't necessarily mean the trade won't work out it's just <clears throat> you're gonna see your trade go pretty red before it goes green if of course it goes green it needs to come back up to this level so market's been open now for 50 minutes. Um, we've been in the trade for 20-ish minutes. So I'll check in again in 10, 15 minutes. It is 7.34. We've been in the trade for almost 50 minutes. And I think when I was last on, we were, I don't know, somewhere over here. Anyways, we've continued to move to the downside. This is what my PL looks like on E-Trade. Um, still need to push back up into this level so i just wanted to update that and we will see what it looks like in another 10 minutes all right we are have been in the trade for 55 minutes now and spx has kind of started to crawl back up and this is what the trade looks like now i should have put in a buy to close order earlier and had i actually done that it would have already filled um but that's okay. I'm going to close it now. I'm going to put in my closing order. So 2370 minus $1.60 is 2210. And oops, I don't think you can see this preview. 
I'm going to send that 2210 and when this fills I will have had a gain of $160. So it should fill pretty closely. Pretty soon, I mean. I'll I'll come back and update when it does. A few minutes have passed and I'm having a tough time getting a fill here for 2210. So, you know, I don't want SPX to trade any lower because then my trade is going to go red. So I think I'm just going to try and get filled for whatever I can here so that I can lock in my gains. I originally opened up this E-Trade account just so that I could trade these iron butterflies out of them. Um, and I started trading them at the beginning of December and I haven't had a loser since. So it's been one, two, three, four, five, six. This is my seventh trade um, this month. Um, but anyways, I, I had wanted to like compare fills against TOS but I haven't really found E-Trade to be better than Thinkorswim as far as faster fill times on multiple leg spreads. So there's that. So you see it's tapping my limit price, but it's not filling me. I'm not sure if I should just be patient or get out of it. I think I'll just wait here another few minutes. Okay, it just, right after I paused that, it just filled me. So I am out. Oops, I didn't realize my screen was cut off. And I, I'm i still learning how to use this platform. So anyhow, um, there's my filled entry and my filled exit. So that's a net gain of $160 minus whatever my commissions are. All right. All right, so the total time in that trade was one hour and five minutes. And I know I only traded one contract, um, but that was a pretty sketchy day to be trading it anyways, since it was quad witching day. And um, that was the day Tesla was being added to the S&P. Um, and normally I do trade three contracts. Um, it's just my personal rule that I don't like to trade more than $10,000 in any one strategy. So. You know, I see members trading much bigger size than I do, five, 10, I don't know, maybe more contracts than that, and then scaling out. So taking off a couple at $1.60, a couple more at 200 or whatever increments you like. But obviously you can scale up as many contracts. There's a much bigger profit potential out there than obviously just my one contract. But I'm a conservative trader. I don't swing for home runs. I like small base hits. I like to take my profits off the table early. And I am not the kind of trader who gets like FOMO about leaving money on the table. I lock in my profits and I move on with my day. All right, the cons about this trade, at least in comparison to a regular vertical credit spread. Number one is the buying power. So it requires more buying power than a regular vertical credit spread. Um, in order for me to make $160 in a regular vertical credit spread, it would tie up about $13 to $1,400 of buying power. And in the Iron Butterfly, it requires closer to $3,000 per contract. I didn't mention this in the trade, but my stop loss is calculated by taking the short strike and adding or subtracting the premium received. So in my live example, um, had SPX dropped to 3691.30, that would have been my trigger to exit the trade. All right, the second con is, is when the expected move is low, when the expected move for SPX is low, that in effect brings my stop levels in tighter. So 
if SPX makes a extreme move one way or the other early in the day, then it will kick me out of the trade. You know, I'll have to honor my stop loss and, and cut the trade. So the bottom line is, is this trade doesn't work if um, IV, if a volatility does not contract. But really, those are the only two things that I can think of. Um, and those cons don't outweigh the pros for me. So I will make another video on um, Thinkorswim and I'll trade more than one contract and you can see how long it takes me to reach my different profit targets because sometimes the difference between my $1.60 order filling and my $2 order filling is just a couple of minutes, but sometimes it's 20 minutes. Um, but you can see how the price action of SPX affects the profit targets for um, these iron butterflies. And sometimes I see a lot of other traders squeezing way more money out of these things than I, than I ever have. Um, I just don't have the risk tolerance to let these things run. Um, maybe one day I will for the sake of the team in this video, but um, otherwise I'm a pretty risk averse trader. I, like I said earlier, I just lock in my profits and I move on with my day. Um, all right. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, leave me your questions below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.